Hi there folks, Christy your flute coach here. I'm ready to take you through this flute fingering chart that you've gained access to. And I just want to uh, record this video just to help you get started with this chart if you're unfamiliar with them or it's been a bit of time away from the flute for you. So uh, whether you're a total beginner or you're a pro, uh, this finger chart is absolutely essential because it gives you all the common fingerings or finger placements, however you'd like to call them, uh, for all the notes between low C here and the high C right down the bottom here. So looking at the chart, you'll see a diagram of a flute on your left here. Now the purple keys show you which finger is placed on which key. So take some time to pick up your flute if you're still relatively new with it and make sure that you have your fingers aligned properly and that all your fingers are matching up with the correct purple key that they're supposed to be placed over as indicated. Now on the right you will see rows and rows of notes and as I said before that lists every common fingering from that low C to the high C which is four octaves uh, above. Now you'll notice that some notes actually have two ways that they can be written which is really tricky. Now an example being this F sharp and G flat here. Now it looks like two different notes. Uh, on the, the music staff, how they're written, but underneath there is only one fingering and they are the same note. They do sound exactly the same. Now, the reason that they have two names is that they are called enharmonic equivalents of one another. And basically the reason why you'd use one way of writing it over the other depends on the key that a piece of music is written in. So the key is the pattern of notes that are used so don't worry too much about this. We'll come back to these sharp and flat notes uh, a little later on uh, in your lessons. Um, and just know that they are a halfway step in between those natural notes. So natural notes have no sharp or flat sign. So for example, we've got C, we've got C sharp, D flat and D. So the C sharp, D flat is a halfway step between the C note and the D note there. Now one other thing you'll notice are that some notes have two fingerings and an example of that is this A sharp and B flat and once again they sound exactly the same they are the same note but we have two different ways of playing them and you will actually use these two alternative fingerings quite regularly with with B flat A sharp it's a really handy one and when you'll use them depends on the key signature of the piece and the, the notes that are surrounding that A sharp and B flat uh, because this little switching of the thumb position can make things a little bit tricky. So uh, depending on what notes you have to play before or after that B flat will dictate which of those fingerings you'll use. But once again, that's a little bit more advanced and we'll come back to that later. So underneath each note is a very simple diagram in black and white of the flute keys and the fingerings that you need to use. So the black circles represent the keys that need to be pressed down all the way and the open circles are fingers that are to be left up. So you won't be pressing down with those fingers, your fingers will just rest above the keys in those cases. Now if you're wondering where to start, you're just learning your notes. Uh, you might logically want to start right at the beginning and go to the end. That's how you'd read a book, but that's not actually how you use this fingering chart. That's actually starting the really hard way. Uh, the notes at the beginning are at the extremes of the registers, so the very lowest notes and the very highest notes are actually the most difficult to play. So you're probably going to get into strife relatively quickly and you'll get really discouraged and want to give up because it's all too hard. Um, now, the reason that they're difficult to play these notes is that you need to do some adjusting of your embouchure, which is the shape of your mouth, as well as the direction and speed of your air um, into and across the flute. You need to make some adjustments to play these notes really well. Now, that's a little bit more advanced. You will get there, I promise. But for now, I recommend that you focus on notes in the middle of this range before you expand upwards and downwards. 
Now I find that starting from the G on the second row here, this G is a really nice starting point and you can work up a couple of notes through to A, B and C natural. Now for now I just want you to forget the sharps and flats between the notes, those halfway steps and we'll just focus on the natural notes. Now this little progression is really nice. It's nice and easy for your fingers because in each case you are just lifting one finger off at a time for each new note. So let's go through an example together. Let's start on that G note. So let's look at the fingering. For G on the left hand we have the three fingers pressed down and the thumb. And then on the right hand we just have that little pinky. So just take a moment and get your flute in position and put those fingers down to get a G note. Wonderful. Now to play A, if we just skip across, you'll see that we take off the ring finger. That's the only difference. One ring finger coming off. And then skipping across to B, the middle finger is coming off. So you're just left with the first finger the thumb on the left hand and the pinky stays down. And for C, you'll find that you just need to take off your thumb. So it's just your first finger and your pinky on the right hand there. So if you just go through those progressions up and down a couple of times just to get familiar with them. So lifting up a finger at a time for each new note. Now once you've nailed these notes, you can definitely gradually expand up and down the range. And for beginners, I think you should find that most of the pieces at your level don't go too much beyond that low G and the next G1 octave up. So this G and the next G1 octave up. And you can see actually and compare that the fingerings for those two notes are the same. So you've actually just killed two birds with one stone there and it's just a bit of an adjustment of the, the air end and lip shape to blow that higher G. And you'll find that for many of the notes the, fingering, the fingerings are the same between those two octaves. So that's great, you've got a head start already. So Work on those notes in that range first and it really will allow you to play a lot of songs, a lot of beginner songs. And one final tip, you actually don't even need your flute to practice the fingerings. After a while, you'll probably find that you're practicing them without even realising it. And I tend to do them when I'm holding a pen or a pencil or something like that, even a straw. So I think you'll find that you do the exact same thing too. Now. I really hope that this quick video has helped you to learn to use this chart and remember if you have any questions please email me at contact at or post them on my Facebook page. I'd love to hear from you. Bye for now.